Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. I'm your host, Brianna Wilson. I am a certified dementia practitioner and the founder of Bamboo Care. So today is a special episode and it's about the coronavirus and dementia. So we'll be talking about how to protect your partner as well as yourself. So if you haven't heard about the coronavirus yet, where have you been. I mean, it's all over the news, it's all over social media, and it's seemingly continuing to spread. So at the time of this recording, the coronavirus has spread from China to about 90 other countries. The CDC is advising against traveling to places like China, South Korea, Iran, Italy, and Japan. And even like U.S. airlines such as American Airlines, Alaskan Airlines, Delta, JetBlue, and United are beginning to waive fees, allow flight changes, and even suspending flights in some cases. So, for example, United is reducing domestic routes, meaning flights within the U.S., by 10%. International flights are being reduced by 20%. And they are suspending flights altogether between the U.S. and a few places in China. So this is becoming a pretty big deal. And in the U.S. alone, there are now more than 300 confirmed cases. Okay, and I think it's even approaching upon 400 at this point. So let's talk about this coronavirus. So coronaviruses are nothing new. Okay, but usually they're found in animals. However, the coronavirus that is spreading around now is newly identified, and it's named COVID-19. And it was first identified in Wuhan, China, in December of 2019. So it's suspected that this virus originated from animals. It was linked to like a live animal market, and then it spread to people. And because this is a relatively new virus, right, the CDC is still trying to learn about how it spreads. And unlike the cold or the flu that tends to spread more during like colder months, it's not really clear at this time whether the spread of the COVID-19 will decrease as the weather gets warmer. So, you know, a lot is still up in the air. However, it is primarily thought to spread from person to person and mainly between people who are in like close proximity to one another, so about six feet, through like respiratory droplets, meaning that if somebody coughs or sneezes and you're next to them and those droplets get on you, near you, in your system, you could then also become infected if that person has coronavirus. The virus is also thought to be spread from contact with infected surfaces or objects. So very similar to the cold or flu. You know, if somebody has the cold or flu, that's why they emphasize covering your cough, covering your sneezes, washing your hands, all those sorts of things. And the same thing still applies with the coronavirus. So let's talk about the symptoms of COVID-19. So symptoms usually appear about 2 to 14 days, and it varies in severeness. There are three main symptoms to watch out for one being fever, two being cough, and three being shortness of breath. But it could also include things like fatigue, headaches, and less frequently, diarrhea. Luckily, about 80% of the COVID cases are mild, and doctors are recommending that people rest, drink plenty of fluids, self-isolate, but they don't necessarily need to be hospitalized. Now, they do recommend you check in with your doctor, kind of keep them up to date, especially if you feel like your symptoms are worsening. Now, the other 20% of cases are more severe, and they require hospitalization. So some of these cases that are more severe could result in pneumonia and kidney failure and ultimately death. So let's talk about the relevance of dementia to the coronavirus. So as we know, dementia is not solely a condition of the elderly. Anyone at any age, unfortunately, can get dementia. But it is true that age is a risk factor of dementia. And that dementia is also more common in people over the age of 65. So why is this important? Well, this is important because the body's immune system tends to weaken with age and it doesn't work as effectively as it once did. 
Older adults also don't respond as well to vaccines, they're more likely to get sick, and they recover much more slowly from injury, infections, and illness. So unfortunately, with the COVID-19, the fatalities reported, which at this point, there have been a little over like 3,500 deaths worldwide, the risk of dying is increased for persons over the age of 60 years. So there seems to be about a 26% chance of dying if infected by the coronavirus in persons over the age of 60. That's not very good, right? So on top of that, pre-existing conditions that may also increase the risk of dying from COVID-19 are cardiovascular disease, diabetes, chronic respiratory diseases, high blood pressure, and cancer. So we know that those with dementia could be at a high risk of at least catching the coronavirus, not only due to their age and comorbidities, but also due to not being able to self-initiate or remember to take the necessary precautions needed to protect oneself from the coronavirus or to avoid certain behaviors that may increase their risk. Now, depending on the level of dementia, your partner may not regularly wash their hands or they might forget to wash their hands altogether. They may not cover their cough or sneeze, or if they do, they might use their hands and then they don't wash them. They just might rub them on their pants or not do anything. They may constantly touch their face. They may place inedible objects in their mouth, frequently touch objects or surfaces, and they may hang in close proximity to other people who may or may not be sick. So what precautions can we take to protect both our partners and ourselves? So number one and most importantly, washing your hands frequently with soap and water for at least 20 seconds is the best thing that you can do to protect yourself from coronavirus. You wanna make sure you're getting the back of your hands and the lower palms because people do tend to miss these areas. And we can follow this for ourselves, right? But it may be hard to get your partner on board, trying to convince them to get up for seemingly no reason, to wash their hands for seemingly no reason, may not go over so well. So, if you could at least wipe their hands down with hand sanitizer wipes or alcohol pads, that would be preferable, right? And the CDC actually recommends using hand sanitizer or alcohol pads with at least 60% alcohol. So you want to be sure to read the labels. Tip number two, if at all possible, if your partner is over 60, please consider keeping them home and avoiding public transportation, crowds, or places with like high traffic of people. Now this doesn't mean that you can't take your partner outside. Everyone could benefit from fresh air, but maybe just limit it to the porch or the patio or the backyard, somewhere in close proximity to the house where there's not a lot of people, okay? Now tip number three is that if you or your partner must go out for any reason, which is definitely possible, I know I still have to work, as do many of you. You guys also may have jobs outside of the home. And if you are going outside of the home, they're really recommending that you stay at least arm's length away from a person. But really, they're starting to recommend at this point six feet as the droplets from something like a cough or a sneeze can travel as far as five feet. They're also recommending that you really try to avoid shaking hands at this point. Now, if you have a job where shaking hands is kind of just a part of it, I would recommend you keep hand sanitizer on deck or some sanitization wipes on deck so that as soon as you finish shaking their hands, you can clean yours and go on about your business, okay? Now, if your partner must go somewhere like an adult day center or something like that, and you're unable to keep them home, I would definitely ask the facility what precautions they're taking to keep their participants safe. And if they're not already promoting the use of hand sanitizer gel or wipes to keep the resident's hands clean and to reduce the risk of spreading infections, okay? Now, hopefully they're already doing the basics 
and making sure the employees are washing their hands regularly, keeping sick employees home, as this is just like typical protocol, even without the coronavirus going around. So hopefully you wouldn't have to worry about things like that. I do know, especially since the nursing home event that happened in Washington, where several people have been infected and passed away from the coronavirus, additional nursing facilities, adult day centers, places like that where there's like a community of people, they're starting to take additional steps to protect both themselves and their residents and their community. Tip number four is avoid kissing, hugging, touching your partner's face or hands. Like right now, you really just want to avoid a lot of the touchy feeliness, especially if you have been outside of the home. I mean, you just never know what you could have picked up and be carrying around. So just try to limit that right now. Also, tip number five, avoid touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth, really the whole face, okay? And this is easier said than done because... A lot of us touch our face a lot and we don't even realize it, okay? So <laughs> just be mindful, okay? Now, this is a little bit easier for us to follow and you may suggest to your partner to not touch their face, but please don't like scold or fuss at them if they do. Just make sure you're keeping their hands clean regularly throughout the day and they should be okay, all right? Tip number six, disinfect high touch surfaces frequently. So high touch surfaces are like countertops, tabletops, doorknobs especially, um, bathroom fixtures like the, the knob to flush the toilet, maybe even the toilet seat, right? Because that's also exposed to bodily fluids, toilets, phones. I mean, we're constantly on our phones, especially in this day and age. Wipe that phone down, okay? Keyboards, tablets, laptops, all of it. Bedside tables, all of it. And like I said, any surface that's exposed to bodily fluids, whether it's urine, whether it's feces, whatever, wipe it down. Tip number six, if you are feeling sick or you think you might be sick, so say you're coughing or sneezing, maybe you have a fever, please, please, please wear a mask and again, wash your hands regularly. You also want to stay hydrated. Make sure you're getting plenty of electrolytes, even if it's just through something like Gatorade. You may also want to try to self-isolate to avoid undue spreading of the virus or any other sickness you may have. This also includes touching your pets. Some people don't realize that your pets could also spread the virus. And especially with the coronavirus, with it originating in animals, you could be putting your animal at risk too, possibly. Okay, so just don't touch your pets. Try to avoid contact with your loved one. Now, if you are a care partner and you care for your partner at home and you're sick, you may want to possibly delegate the care to someone else if it's possible. Now, I'm a realist, and I know that this isn't possible for everyone. So, if there's no one else who can care for your partner, please, 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 just make sure that you try to at least limit contact with your person, wear a mask, disinfect surfaces you may have touched, wash your hands frequently. If you have like a cough or a sneeze, keep tissues on your person, sneeze or cough, in the tissue, dispose it immediately, and then wash your hands thoroughly. Again, they're recommending 20 seconds, which most people don't do. I'm guilty. 20 seconds is a long time, right? We don't even realize. <laughs> but try to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Also, you want to avoid sharing personal household items while you're sick. So you want to keep your own set of dishes, cups, utensils, your own towels, your own hygiene products, separate from your partners or any other loved one you may have in the home. Most importantly, call your health provider for further advisement on next steps to prevent infecting other people. You want to stay home until you're instructed to leave. This is a highly infectious disease, so 
they're really recommending people call before kind of coming in so that the right precautions can be taken. Now, if you feel like your symptoms are just getting really, really bad, you need to call 911. But when you do, make sure you tell them that you suspect that you may have been exposed to COVID-19 or the coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, so that they can take the proper precautions when interacting with you because there have been some cases where emergency personnel have been exposed to the coronavirus. So you just want to keep that in mind. Now, if you think your partner is sick, immediately call their healthcare provider and request further instruction. You also want to keep your partner away from household pets, again, just like you. Disinfect anything they may have touched. Wash or sanitize their hands frequently. If your partner is okay with wearing something like a mask and they can breathe easily, then that's fine. You can try it. But otherwise, it may cause more distress and panic, which isn't good for anybody. I mean, a lot of people, we really don't like wearing masks. If we're wearing a mask, it's because we have to. But for someone living with dementia, putting a mask on their face, even if you try to explain and use logic and reason as to why they need to wear it, it's just kind of a scary thing. And it just might not go too well, okay? So if they don't want to wear a mask, that's fine. You don't want to cause more distress and panic than necessary because it's not good for anybody. Plus, stress weakens the immune system, which we just don't need right now. So tip number seven, if you aren't aware, places are selling out. I mean, water, toilet paper, gloves, disinfectants, hand sanitizers. Oh man, I mean, so many things because people are panicking and they're hoarding supplies. I mean, when we went to the store the other day, this is before they put limits on things. People had seven, eight, nine, ten cases of water, five, six, seven, eight <laughs> packs of toilet paper. I mean, so a lot of the places where we live, they're out of stock of so many things. So if you are someone who has been waiting to the last minute to get the supplies you need, even if it's just re-up, like for us, low on toilet paper, just an everyday kind of need. We had to call home and see if a family member could pick up toilet paper where they live. <laughs> so get to the store, get what you need, even places online are selling out. So that's kind of important. So in the event that you can't leave the home, if the outbreak worsens, you just want to be prepared and you also just want to have the normal everyday things that you need, okay? So some ideas that you might want to get are like canned or frozen foods, peanut butter, jelly crackers, nuts, trail mix, dried fruit, granola bars, seasonings, water, Gatorade, because again, you want to stay hydrated. You also want to make sure your partner is staying hydrated. And also, don't forget about your pets and your babies if you have any. Make sure they have enough food, okay? If any of your prescriptions or any of your partner's prescriptions are low, make sure that you get those refilled, okay? Another thing that you want to make sure that you get and is oftentimes overlooked, and even I almost forgot to mention it, is incontinence supplies. So if your partner is incontinent, you want to make sure in the event that you cannot leave the home, that you have enough incontinence pads if you use them, like the liners that go on the bed. You wanna make sure you have enough adult briefs. You wanna make sure that you have the laundry detergent or cleaning supplies that you need to clean up if there is a urinary or fecal accident. You just wanna make sure you prepare on that level too. If you still can, you know, you at least wanna grab a couple of masks, some gloves, some disinfectants, hand sanitizer to protect yourself and your partner. But again, I mean, places are really selling out, so good luck. Now, I really want to say this, and this is important. You really do want to avoid from panicking. You want to stay up to date, of course, but please don't news binge if it messes with your peace of mind. For a lot of people, this is a scary thing. I mean, it's been a while since we've had like an outbreak like this. Um, I don't too much watch the news, but I feel like the last ones that I heard about were like West Nile and Ebola, right? But this one feels a little bit 
um, more close to home. Even when measles were starting to like spread through children again, it didn't really feel that close to home, right? But for me, the coronavirus just seems a little bit more real, you know? So it's normal to kind of freak out a little bit, be scared, confused, stressed, even sometimes angry in some cases during a crisis, but you really want to try to keep calm, keep your peace of mind. If you're staying at home, you still want to try to maintain a healthy lifestyle. You know, eat as healthy as you can, exercise if you can, reach out to loved ones, talk to friends, those kind of things. Please don't use like smoking or alcohol or other drugs to try to deal with your emotions. If you really feel overwhelmed, please try to seek out a health worker or counselor who can help you kind of work through those things that you may be experiencing. Also, if you are trying to inform yourself about the coronavirus, please don't go to social media. I mean, social media will just freak anybody out when it comes to anything. So try to use more reliable sources like the WHO website, the World Health Organization, organization website or the CDC or maybe even the news in some cases but again the news can kind of be scary um, so just prepare but have peace of mind okay so I hope this podcast was interesting and informative and that you learned something of value if you have anything that you would like to tell us or share you can always send us a voice message on whatthedementia.com. You can also send us an email at podcast at whatthedementia.com. So thank you so much for joining us on another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. We look forward to catching you on the next episode. Take care, be safe, wash your hands, and until next time, stay strong, carry on, and remember, you are not alone. Bamboo Care is always here.